Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards here for Pour Some Stamps and thank you so much for joining me today. I'm bringing you a bit of a different project today. This is a, um, a set of bookmarks that I've created using the gorgeous Kraken Christmas stamp set. Now, when I saw these little nutcrackers, I figured that they were ideal for this little project that I have in mind. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this heavyweight cardstock, this is 110 pound weight cardstock, and I'm just figuring out, I have these scraps, I'm just figuring out where the halfway point is and I'm gonna score them at halfway. Now, these two shorter pieces I used, the longer piece I didn't end up using, that, but it is um, sized for a card base. So I put that aside so I can use it for a card base another day. So I just used the two shorter pieces today. So you don't need to be exact with the measurements here. The card stock pieces just need to be twice as long as the stamped images you're going to use. Um, so I've left plenty of room around mine and um, just made sure that I've got plenty of room at the bottom. So I've kept them folded and where that score line is, the folded piece, I'm stamping my images towards that edge. So I'm putting two nutcrackers on each piece of cardstock that I'm going to be using. And as I say, you just want to make sure that you kind of line them up so their heads are towards the top where that folded edge is. So now I'm going to unfold them and I'm going to bring out my Copic markers and I'm going to colour them in. So I'm using some kind of non-traditional colours for um, a couple of them. So this is RV55 and RV52. And I'm doing a kind of pink and aqua combination. And on my other guys, I'm doing a blue and white kind of combination. You can go to town with these, which is why I love them. You can choose lots of different color combinations. I've done some in reds and blacks, some in greens and reds to, for a real Christmassy feel. But you can just choose whatever you like, make it your own. And um, that's what makes it so fun. So I'm just going to colour these in quickly. I'm only going to show you one. Um, I don't want to spend hours and hours um, boring you to tears with my colouring, but I just thought I'd show you quickly one that I'd done. So for the kind of the aqua combination, I'm using BG13, BG11 and BG10. And I'm going to colour in the kind of accessory details with that. I'm also going to bring in a kind of gold combination which I'm going to use to colour in some of the accent pieces. So you can see here I'm just using um, a combination of light and dark or light, medium and dark markers. I always like to throw in my shade first, so my darkest marker first, and then blend out towards lightest. And sometimes I go back in a few times, especially if I feel like the blend is not um, blend, not looking quite so even. I will go back in a couple of times, but most of the time I'll just give it one coat. So for the boots and the kind of things that I want to look um, black, I've chosen warm greys. I felt like the warm greys worked nicely with the pinks and the turquoises um, rather than the neutral greys, which are the other kind of grey markers I have. So I decided to go for the warm grey. So I'm using a warm grey 7, so W7, W5 and W3 for these kind of dark grey, blackish looking pieces. So I'm using this dark grey kind of blackish colour combination for his boots, his belt. I'm going to use it on the kind of um, striped edges of his jacket, both the ones that run down the middle and at the top where his epaulets are and also just for the cuffs of his jacket. And I'm um, just trying to be quite careful because there are some quite fine details in here. Those little stripes are very small. So you do have to just use the very tip of your marker to get in there and make sure that you don't kind of um, smudge it out everywhere, which I am prone to do because I am quite clumsy. Um, but once all of this is done, I'm going to bring in my next color combination, which is going to be um, gold or at least my take on gold so the colors that i like to use for gold are um, the yr 20s so i have yr 24 and yr 21 and i do end up bringing in yr 20 as well just to add a little bit more contrast but i'm using these markers just to add some like i said gold accents to everything i mean this guy he is like a, a royal guardsman isn't he so he needs a bit of gold on his uniform so I'm adding that to the kind of um, braid around the edge of his jacket, his epaulets, and to the little kind of pole that he's holding. 
And here is where I bring in that YR20 just to add a little bit of extra contrast um, and to help smooth everything out. I'm also going to use this color combination for the crown on the top of his head. Um, obviously I wanted a golden crown for him because why not? And um, I'm going to add that just to that base piece, the piece that looks kind of like the crown. And then I will use my other colored markers for the center pieces. So the kind of larger piece is going to be in the pink combination that I used for his jacket. And then my little gems are going to be in that turquoisey color to make them look perhaps a bit like diamonds. I don't know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? The golden crown covered in diamonds. Um, but anyway, then this guy just needs his hair and his face and hands completed. So I'm going to pull out some markers for that. I decided for his skin color, I was just going to go in with E11 and E00 and just add a little bit of shading. It's quite a small area, so I don't need to worry too much. Um, but I just like this combination for skin tone. I did end up using this combination on all of my nutcrackers. Um, but of course you could go to town and um, really change up the way they look completely. It's up to you. And once his skin was done, all that was left was his hair. So I'm gonna pull out some lighter warm gray markers here. So I've got W0 and a W1. And I'm just gonna use that to do his little bit of hair and his mustache. Um, and I thought I would use the warm grays again because it tied in with the other warm grays that I had already used for the darker pieces of his uniform. And that is him complete. So off camera, I will go ahead and color all of my other ones. You can see them here. So I've done two in that pink and turquoise combination and two in that um, blue, white and gold and black, I guess, combination. And now I'm just using my Secura Jelly Roll pen to add some nice white highlight details to everything. Um, this is an added, added extra, you do not have to do this, but I like the way that it looks. And I just think it gives it a little bit more of a, um, a nice kind of three-dimensional look to your images. And I just, yeah, I'd, I've kind of gotten into the habit of doing this. Every now and then I forget and I don't add it, but most of the time I like to try and add this white gel pen detail to everything. So like I say, you can really go to town with these images. You can color them in lots of different ways. And if you are looking for some inspiration, please do check out the design team um, projects. Look, there was, I, I'm just blown away by um, some of them on there. They're amazing. So you can check out the Pour Some Stamps website and go to the blog. You will get lots of kind of ideas and information on there. And even if you just kind of go to the shop and look at the stamp set, there are loads of projects underneath which you can kind of take inspiration from as well if you look through the photos of the, um, the projects on the stamp set. So that's a good place to start if you're lacking inspiration or you're looking for some ideas. And I often get lots of ideas from seeing what the rest of the design team have done because they all are so incredibly amazing. So once I have finished with all of those details, it is time to kind of make my bookmarks. Now this is not um, technical at all. <laughs> In fact, it's very basic. I've taken a pair of scissors and I am cutting around the edge of my little guys here. Now, if you had the coordinating dies, you could use them and a partially die cut. You'd have to be quite careful how you did that though. Um, I'm not sure how it would work. You'd have to be very careful about how you lined up because what you don't want to do is cut the top edge, the folded edge of the, um, the kind of bookmark at the top there. So you'd have to be quite careful. Um, I'm using scissors just because I find it easier and I, I'm not being overly careful or accurate or anything like that. I'm just kind of going for it. <laughs> and um, These are gonna be little bookmarks that I give to my children. So I don't know if you're anything like me at Christmas time, I like to give books um, to my children. I like to encourage reading as much as possible. And I just thought this would be a nice little added extra to add in there. So I cut around all of them and now I'm just using some scraps of pattern paper that I had left in my stash and I'm going to use these to place onto the backs and also into the middle of my little bookmark. Now I am using scraps, I've got all sorts of willy nilly paper, nothing matches or works together but my kids will enjoy it anyway and, and that's all that matters and I'd rather use up my scraps than kind of cut into a nice new piece. 
but you could of course get all nice and coordinated and have everything match up. So I'm just showing here that another option would be to stamp on the back and colour in the back as well. You could also just leave it plain and add a little message or a little um, a kind of um, a stamp on the back, but I just decided to use pattern paper and everything. And now I'm going to add little magnets. So I have this sheet of magnetic tape. I got this at Daiso, which is kind of like a dollar store here. And um, I'm gonna use that to attach my little bookmarks together so that they will hold over the pages. So I'm just cutting little strips of that off. Now this is um, double-sided. So I'm showing you here that because because of the poles on the magnet, they won't sit directly together. So one option is just to place them down like that and you're ready to go. But the other option is, and because the, the tape on these isn't very strong, is to kind of peel the tape off the magnets, which is what I'm doing here. And then you can back them together so that they're exactly lined up. So the front of one will stick to the back of the other, if that makes sense and you can add your own double-sided tape. This is nice, strong double-sided tape, so it's gonna keep things nice and secure. And this is what I ended up doing for all of my little bookmarks, um, just because I felt it was a bit more secure. So then you just literally place it down where you want it, stick it together, and lo and behold, you've got magnets on either side. And when you close your bookmark, they close together. So here is my little book. I've got my Harry Potter book. I'm going to open it up, stick my magnet on, and you can see it's not gonna fall out. It's a great little bookmark. Maybe won't go over too many pages, but it will stick over about three or four pages. Holds in there nicely, and it's just a great little gift to give as an added extra for Christmas. So I hope you liked this little project today. I thought it was a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to giving these to my children. If you did enjoy it, please do give it a thumbs up. Please leave a comment down below. I would love to hear from you and please do subscribe to my channel. I'd love to see you come back again. Thanks so much for joining me today. Take care.